I'm with Jonathan Moore to my right and Matt Black further right, better known to you and me as Cold Cut. Hello. 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 I've heard you've been credited for pioneering a lot of sounds involved with hip hop, trip hop, pop, anything that comes to mind really. But what I want to know is, is Cold Cut, does Cold Cut fit into a genre of, that is, do you have a name for the music that you produce? Yeah, it's called Cold Cut. <laughs> That's a genre in itself, I think. <laughs> it's a mixture of uh, electro, reggae, rock, boogie, yeah. afro, disco style and dub. Electro was another word that we like coined that. for it, which we thought was quite good. It's yeah. certainly better than electronic. Digital. Yeah. Dig it all. Dig it all. Digital. With, with digital jockeys and DJs. Yeah, I mean, what makes you guys so durable and such a, you know... Um, just change the batteries from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's as easy as that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We're vampires of the scene, you know. We suck blood from the young up-and-coming DJs to transfer it into energy yeah, for our parties. Mm. Mm. Lovely. What does that feel like? Um, it's great. It's good, yeah. No, we, you know, just enjoy it still, and it's still a laugh and a challenge, and I think that's the main thing, really. And if that goes, then we'll probably be boring, and, um, you know, people will tell us very quickly. So, I mean, how long do you think you can keep it up? Um, longer than the industry. Yeah, we'll be here. Old cut. Do you tour much? Have been. Yeah, we don't do it quite in a regular sort of way. A lot of bands do sort of six months on the road and six months off or whatever. But we, Last two years. We do we've good sessions, yeah, 65 gigs or something all over the world. Mm -hmm. But we only like to go away for short periods of time because we like to stay at home with our families and stuff. True. Fair enough. True, but this um, tour we've been doing in Australia and Singapore and New Zealand mm -hmm. has been maybe the best so far for us. Uh, all the dates have been really good. It's been really excellent. Thanks for your people coming along. Yeah. And, uh, it's just been a total right result. Um, when when it comes to writing and producing music, is there um, is there a duality happening here, happening here, or is it one goes away with one part and the other sort of like a bit of a baton passing exercise? It happens in all different ways. Um, you know, Matt may start a track off and bring it to me. I might start a track off. We might do a track together. We might do tracks individually. But at some point, they pass through both our hands and we both kind of do work on it. And, uh, it can be as simple as John coming with a name of something from that, like, you mean an idea to start with. But there's always a link. It's kind of, in a way, I'm like a precocious brat and John's like a wise uncle. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you used to be a school teacher? Yeah, I was a school teacher, yeah. Yeah. In 1980. Yeah. From 1980 to 1983, I taught in first a kind of hardcore, di difficult school for kids that had problems, which um, was interesting but very tiring. And then in colleges, and then I went part-time and I started DJing and teaching, and then eventually I just ended up DJing, and then I met Matt and blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. Uh, read loads of science fiction books, always liked music, started messing around with computers, that was it. Mm He's -hmm. a programmer for various companies. Biochemistry, actually. That's the, really? Uh, yeah, it's the new rock and roll. Do you still mm -hmm. dabble in biochemistry? Only on a kind of deeply superficial level, whereby oh, I'm trying to... virus. <laughs> exactly. Believe in the kind of idea that culture is like a biological environment analogue, that an ideas reproduce in that environment and sort of succeed and mutate and spread and stuff like that. And the analogy to the biological selfish gene principle, Richard Dawkins has worked very into all that stuff. Also, artificial life and um, nature of consciousness. Oh, you're blowing me stuff. away here. Uh, I guess the populace out there would probably know your work when you dabbled in the mainstream side of things with, you know, with... Yeah, we with... got under the fence. Yeah, you yeah. did. What made you, you know, cross the border? Oh. We were too unsteady, really. Yeah. Straddling the underground and the overground simultaneously was too difficult to balance. It was good fun, but there was a lot of um, weight and baggage that came with it. And, and sharks. Yeah, and sharks. And some of those sharks. sharks. Yeah, vegetarian. So we're not into sharks, particularly. Um, sharks or are cool. vegetarian yeah, sharks. Yeah. <laughs> tapeworms. tapeworms. Psychic tapeworms. Psychic tapeworms. tapeworms. There's and a lot of those problems. as well. And, yeah. Meetings, managers, accountants, music by focus group, you know, <laughs> turn the snare up. It it's just changed your name. Yeah, yeah. Change your name, Colt. Your You're two eighties. You know. We're two eighties. Yes, kids. <laughs> Terrible what they tried to do to us. So haircuts and stylists. They had stylists they wheeled in, you know, which we probably wheeled out. I mean, they managed to get their way from time to time. I'm sadly embarrassed to say there is. My out telephone there. video. Yeah, no, sure. Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> 
take it away. <laughs> no, don't play that. That was one. a nadir yeah. of the career, definitely that one. Yeah. It's, it's more fun doing it for yourself, you know, and um, you know, doing it for yourself. Keep them tell me, tell me about um, you've got your own label, Linda Tunes, which we're familiar with artists like Herb Lizer and DJ Batam and, and Neotropic. How did that label start? Um, went to Japan and uh, watched some very mad ninja flicks late at night on Japanese television, which I couldn't understand. To turn the sound down and then realised that it was all done with like sparkly jackets, puffs of smoke, and mirrors. And that reminded me of Matt and I's kind of travels around the world. <laughs> Matt, similarly, you found some How to Be Ninja article in the magazine. Quickly. So we just got the ninja idea and thought this would make a nice, as John says, Technicolor escape pod from the um, morass of uh, music business bullshit, which we found ourselves a little bit swamped by. A ninja can pop up in v various guises, pop you know. Up. Pop up. Or pop up. Yeah. Or pop up. Or pop up. And um, slip under doors, turn themselves into a diaphanous silk sheet. When they get really good, you know, we haven't got that yeah, good. Yeah, we're not that good yet. So we could just do things under different names and play about with the idea, and that's how the whole thing came about. So the ninja put down the record, to, uh, put down the sword, sorry, to take up the record. What do you look for in an artist when you sign them up? Some sort of original character that's manifested in their music. Yeah. So that there's some kind of tie-up. It's not just a generic trip hop. Or people like Kid Koala have their particular, very unique vibe which is manifested in the way that it puts music together and mixes in elements of humour and just a wide variety of stuff. I'd love to think of him as a true son of cold cut because we made records like DJ Food in the early days. We made uh, yeah. break beats, treats and toys on some of the stuff that we did for people to use. Mm -hmm. And then for years, didn't actually hear that many people using the stuff. And then met Eric Kid Koala. John met him in Montreal and heard his set and he was actually cutting up all the DJ Food stuff and putting it in a hole different load of slices of his own choosing and it that was, was like, yeah that's he was sick, sickening man. sick sickening that's, that's what we said he has <laughs> sickening skill it's like you know we say eric and it's like oh, I'm, I'm just going to give up scratching you know yeah. so it's brilliant and having a ninja nose helps hunting them out you know finding those intelligent interesting people that do stuff that is still funky as well that's mm. i don't like things that are stiff and i think ninja tune likes a funk hello boat oh, your fans are here <laughs> Come on, you slackers, wave! <laughs> Sadness! <laughs> OK, for fans of, of um, your music and fans of um, artists on the Ninja Tune label, where can they access the music? I believe they can access off, it off the internet these days. We have yeah. quite a bit on the net. Uh, NinjaTune.net, which is our site. Then we've got biographies, news on the latest releases, news on live dates. Yeah. Quite a lot of information, pictures, sounds, and radio also show. radio shows. Yeah. The Solid Steel show that John and we have been doing for so many 12 more, more, more years. years now. Um, no, recently still... resigned from Kiss FM in London due to their uh, completely whack the policy of playing policy. cheese all day long. Basically, in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> um, but we still continue to do the show on different stations around the world and also to broadcast it on the net every week because we feel that internet is the new sort of pirate TV, pirate radio style. Um, so hoping to expand that side a bit as well, get other DJs on. Yes, indeed. There's uh, a little feedback. The yeah. feedback from people that visit the site. Yeah. Get quite a lot of interesting information from that. But can you actually download music off your site? I mean, do you experience copyright problems with that? We, we yeah, you can get the radio show mm. and we pay the appropriate royalty for doing that. Yeah, that's right. So we are looking cool. at doing MP3s and that kind of. Uh, can you explain to me what that is, MP3? MP3 is just a name for um, a format of music on computers. And the cool thing about the format is that something like um, a track on a CD, so a five minute track, can be compacted down to be a nice small file. And that means that as it's small, you can send it over the internet quite quickly, even if you've only got a phone line connection. And the quality is quite good. The quality is yeah. getting on for as good as mini disc or CD. What, what I guess what um, astounds me too is like you guys like the six, six million dollar man. Like it's we have the technology. You guys are embracing it as fast as it, it it comes out. Is that an important aspect to your music? It's just that we want tools to do things that we want to do, and one of those things was for Matt and I to be able to play live, basically, or have that feeling of liveness about computerised music, because it was a difficult art to perform. You know, you could mime to adapt, you could take a sequencer and have effectively loads of tracks which you'd mix in and out. Um, you could take a session musician band with you who would play the album perfectly from start to finish. 
we kind of stuck at just DJing and we expanded that to four turntables and two mixers for a while until the equipment was available which we had to make which enabled us to play in real time so the start of that is VJAM which is what Matt deals with mm -hmm. that's uh, VJAM is an audio visual program for the PC that lets you play back audio visual clips yeah. um, from the computer's keyboard so it's like a piano for sound and vision that's how we describe it it's like having loads of little video tapes inside your computer and you can play them back start and stop them, speed them up, slow them down, reverse them, just have to you, have touch you got one button. Here? It's Indeed. over there on my... Should we go and get, get it? it? Yeah. And VJAM was uh, available when um, you released Let Us Play? No, it wasn't available. That was just a demo soon disc. Soon after that, on Let Us Play, oh, right. there was a bunch of other toys, yeah. not including VJAM, but there were videos and stuff on it. Yeah. But since then, we've been developing VJAM for the live show, so that was two years ago already now. Yeah. So, got it to a decent state and actually released it on uh, Let Us Replay mm -hmm. as a toy that you can use to remix the cold cut videos. Wow. Um, plus there's a full version where you can load in your own videos and make, do your own thing totally. So, when we see you guys play live, what do we actually see on stage? Um, <laughs> it's not you two jumping around. A couple of ponds, sort of trying to look inconspicuous. Um, but, we've got our bits of kit, which is pretty homemade. Mm -hmm. The laptops have got most of the stuff on. We use turntables. It's sort of out of the DJ tradition. Matt's got some video CDs that he mixes together like a DJ would mix records and then plays VJAM over the top of that. And then I've got turntables, effects unit and DJAM, which is a sort of digital DJing system that enables me to randomize, remix and edit and play in whatever order I want our tracks. Mm -hmm. And so we just jam them together over the top. So we're not actually synced together in any way, apart from brain-to-brain no -brain so. interaction. That's right. That happens. What about the video stuff happening in the... In the well, that's layers of video CDs, plus Matt's putting video clips in from VJAM. Mm -hmm. And the audio of those is going into the PA system, and I'm putting my stuff into there as well, and affecting it and mixing it. And we both have effects units, so we can kind of dub each other up. So the sound sources of John's and my sounds are mixed together and into the PA and the video sources are mixed together and go into the video projector so it's kind of like a cross between a cinema and a club. Yeah. Would, would it be fair to, cut, to call you guys as more performance artists rather than you know DJs and producers? Because you do incorporate everything from audio to visual. Yeah but we're not sort of getting out there and doing our funky dance do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, we're more anonymous and it's the fact that the equipment is connected together in such a way that we can you know, manifest a performance on it but it's the performance, the output is what you, you're checking, not necessarily what we're doing. Having said that, you know, it's nice to let people know how you're doing stuff, because otherwise they might think it's a tape uh, or not realise that it is actually live. Um, some items we do, some of the tracks we do actually play from video CD with the sound. There's a couple of tracks. But even then we'll be playing stuff on, in layers on top of it. But most of the tracks, yeah, we're doing sort of live, if one can call it that, I believe it is. Yeah. But, um, a new, a new style of, of doing dance music live, Absolutely. coming from DJing mixed with digital technology. OK, so <laughs> basically what you've got is 16 different slots, like having 16 different bits of videotape yeah. that, with the sound that's loaded up there, and I can play them back from the computer's keyboard. So the slot with Q on it, I can trigger from the Q key. I can reverse the uh, direction of the play as well. Can I? So I can reverse the direction of the sample with these keys and uh, speed, speed it up and slow it down. And you two just design this all by your lonesome? And then, uh... In conjunction with some uh, some guys from Cambridge called CamArt, mm -hmm. and one of them, Russell Blakeborough, actually coded this. Do you know anyone who actually uses it to create music? Any other artists? Well, we've only just released it, uh -huh. and as I say, for 30 English pounds, you yep. can get the full version that you can put your own clips into. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping that that will encourage people to actually start using it themselves. But it's only just been released. Yeah. The only place you can get it at the moment is through our online shop at ninjatune.net. We haven't got distribution for it because yeah. normally you have to spend a lot of money to get a computer product into the shops. We're like, well, this is cool. You can get it directly from our site. And uh, yeah, 
it's a reasonable, it it's a good new tool for doing stuff with. Music, and do you think it encourages people to become music makers, or does it sort of, um, what do you think it does to people out there? I hope it does encourage people to, oh, I've knocked oh, the tea over the tea school. Yeah. I, hope it, <laughs> I hope it does encourage people to um, make music and also just make video clips and do animation and all sorts of other stuff. Yeah. You know, and I think there is a desire out there to do it. You can see with the DJing ethic that that was embraced by a lot of people and loads of people now have two turntables and a mixer in their room and try and get it together and sort it out. And it's not a big jump from that to having your computer. A lot of people have computers these days, and this works on pretty much it's all similar, of them, really. It's similar to, you know, a, a console, a games console as well, the kind of immediacy of it, you know. It's not like you have to be a rocket scientist or put in, you know, a three-month course to learn to operate the program. The idea is you open the box, you, you, play. And you, you play, you press buttons, and as soon as you press buttons, this wicked stuff happens, and that encourages you to spend more time with it. Yeah. So, you know, not that instant gratification is always the best thing, but yeah. computers have been for too long. They've been boring brown boxes yeah. that have no real link to the way that humans actually want to comfortably operate to get into something new. Yeah. And it's about opening that up. Yeah. And I also heard that you, were, um, you believe that the future of DJing is also through laptops. I think so, yeah. It seems sensible to me. The vinyl's wicked. It's very good for manipulation, for scratching, etc., etc. But in terms of a product to carry around, it's heavy. You know, CDs are replacing that. They're light. Laptops, I laptops pretty heavy. You know, yeah, well, but you can get your whole collection onto one laptop and then you can interact with it and mix about with it and sort it out. And, you know, there's no hum and feedback, hopefully, normally. We get hum sometimes. I guess it spun me up because, I mean, turntablism is such a huge part of, you know, the, the culture at the moment. It's, and, you know, I mean, with that forward thinking, I wonder what that's going to happen, what's going to happen to turntablism. Well, it'll still be there. I think what this does is introduce another member of the band, really. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. means that, you know... Battle of the laptops. Yeah, battle of the laptops, or the laptops creating certain parts of the performance and, and the turntablists creating more. And, mm. you know, we've worked with Kid Koala where he's, we filmed him brought him into the mix. We've used various different software programs to either layer up jingles or play beats, which he then scratches over. So there's plenty of room for maneuver. And part of the problem with a lot of computers and when they're used to do sequencing music is that they are one person interface. So really only one person can sequence. And this kind of thing, and things like Res Rocket, which is another system that works using the internet, free you up and enable you to become back to that kind of group scenario and collaboration scenario, which mm. is something that has been lacking in dance music to a certain extent. So hopefully that will work. Playing like Matt and I do live, going back to that for a moment, it is like playing a computer game. It's really exciting because you, you, know, you don't want to mess up because people are watching. <laughs> and that's the same if you're with your mates and you're playing a computer game and they're egging you on. And if you do mess up, they all go, you oh, yeah. And it's got that sort of feel to it and that's good fun. I enjoy that. a few bonus enjoy. points. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like um, juggling a load of plates simultaneously as well, you know, when we're using like this gear. Like the Chinese circus, they're out here, you know. Yeah. Go see them. Yeah. We should film them, definitely. <laughs> We're the offshore state cold cut circus. <laughs> but we've met some good people over here in Australia as well, and made some good contacts. Hopefully, going to get some material provided from people here that we'll be able to incorporate in future shows and in um, you know television programs and live internet broadcasts. What we're doing that on PirateTV.net on sort of Ninja Associated site. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've also heard um, a concept, or it's reality now really, of a, virtu a, virtu a virtual studio where you've basically yeah. connected 12 musicians. That's the musicians. Res Rocket. Yeah, oh, that's that's Res Rocket. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. I mean, the Res Rocket program has, uh, is the latest development in a project that's been going on for about four or five years. Um, the idea is to have a system whereby you can make music with other people throughout the world who are connected to the internet. So if you've got an internet connection in a computer in Sydney, and I've got one in London, some other guy's got one in New York, some other guy's got one in Cape Town, we can log into a virtual space within the computer, a bit like a chat room, but it's also a music studio. And it means that we can basically swap parts um, of MIDI information or of just music. I can play some, well, if I could play the guitar, I could play some guitar or do some scratching record it into my computer, hit a button, and it comes up in your computer sequencer arrangement. And you can swap stuff and exchange, and all the time we can be talking in the chat window. So it's totally a new way of 
connecting musicians together to make music worldwide. That's and amazing. It must be sort of a revolution in terms of making music and communication because there's never been anything like that before. And I think that's really what's been holding music back and maybe this whole scene from developing. You know, there's been some promising signs in the last 10, 12 years. There's been a lot of energy, some movements being made forward, but at the same time, things can get stale and stymied and over-commercialized and people come up against these bottlenecks. We need to break that down and actually release the energy and the creativity just to network people together. And I think when you do that, you might get a phenomenal result. I guess it's more instantaneous when it comes to this technology. It is, but yeah, we're lucky because we're standing on the shoulders of giants, basically. All the people who've invented and made progress in the fields of electronic music, in media, you know, in, in science, in art. Mm -hmm. we've, we've got to this stage now where we've, we've worked out certain elements that are needed and we're able to actually manifest those and make them available to people. And that's never actually been possible before because in the past, society could only afford quite a small number of artists because artists don't contribute anything that solid and practical. It was a luxury. It was a luxury and yeah. making art is expensive. Again. You know. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Especially in terms of tea. And making, making art is expensive in terms of pigments and time and materials and stuff. So. In the past, that's been restricted to a small number of people, and there's been like kind of specialist teachings to do that. Mm -hmm. So you can come with the whole question of what is art? If a computer can help you make art, but some of the art generating power is in the computer and you're kind of steering it, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer is, you know, maybe it isn't art, but it's something else, maybe something something new. Are you are you um are you a bit nervous about the millennium happening? Um yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna stay at home. We really? say homes, oh. not domes. Definitely out of London for me, man. I don't want to be where in London. Where are you going? Well, hopefully to the country, to a little pad where, you know, have a party with a few friends and yeah. family. But, and, you know, got, I bought my generator, mm -hmm. a petrol generator. Stock yeah. up now. Yeah. The funny thing about save, save, save. all this millennium bug business, yeah, <laughs> yeah, is it doesn't actually need to be the millennium bug that causes loads and loads of problems. All it's got to be is if people get wound up into a hysteria, as could quite easily happen, you know, mm. how people have crazes and, you know, an idea can sweep a land or even a planet quite quickly. It's like, got to get my savings out. Say 10% of the people do that, it'll be good night nurse for the bank. Because the whole thing's just so, just a house of cards. The yeah. whole financial institution of the Western civilization that's running the planet is pretty flimsy. And everyone knows that. And it doesn't take much. And that's why you get stock market crashes. It doesn't take much to start them off. Mm. What we're coming up with here is there is a lot of fear and uncertainty about the millennium. And personally, I think a lot of computers could go wrong. Mm. They're going to be in things like the old style big municipal companies to fight water, electricity. And I reckon there could, I reckon there's about a 50% chance it could be, <laughs> right? <laughs> they got Just the oldest, worst computers. Problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think there could be some serious problems that could last for a while. I'm not saying Mad Max styly time is coming, but, um, you know, I should get some tins in the area by far, <laughs> yeah? And um, hold tight. Yes, mate, is a ninja phrase, which is soon going to be uh, a club at the Mass in Brixton. That's going to be the next ninja club after stealth and uh, kung fusion, and that should rock. be interesting to see how it goes down in the Brixton area. Um, but it's a decent space. And it's also going to be a website and internet facility where, in the UK at least, we'll be able to offer free internet access and email at your name at yesmate.com. And Rob and Paul, who are the guys who are sort of organising it behind the scenes, um, are hoping to make Yesmate into a sort of central dance music resource and have lots of MP3 technology there and um, arrange deals with distributors and shops so that we can actually sell records from people can hear DJ mixes and, and buy the records directly through the net and various other funky stuff.